Hey guys, I'm Alex C. And I'm Patrick R. We're back at you with another Five Guns video for the firearmblog.com. Well, kind of a six guns video. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, there is a little bit of disagreement, but we'll get to that at the very end. Anyways, the category today is five great CNR rifles you can get for under $500. We really like CNR rifles because oftentimes they're inexpensive, there's military surplus available, av or ammunition available, and they're just a lot of fun to shoot. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of new shooters kind of forget about them. I know I did when I started shooting. Absolutely. You'll write them off maybe as, a, you know, you see a guy with an AR-15 and you think uh, it's a much cooler, much more fun gun, but sometimes you got to look to the past to, you know, bring out a little bit more. Yeah. So anyways, let's start from our left and uh, go to the right. First up is a Lee Enfield rifle. At one time, in the 60s and 70s and up into the 80s, you get these for $10 and $20 from a gun store. This is a uh, Enfield made in 1917 in England, so if it could tell some stories, that'd be cool. It's almost 100 years old. Uh, it works, the rifling's strong, and I paid, I think, $280 for this gun. Um, which for an infield these days is a good deal. I actually got an almost unissued one recently for $500, which is probably a little high. But even though I paid a little bit too much this year, it's probably not going to be too much in a couple years. Well, I'll say this about that gun. I've never seen an infield that looked nice. For some reason, they don't weather real well. Um, you know, this is a, a pretty decent example, but uh, the unissued one is just staggeringly beautiful. And I didn't choose that one to include because of the price. It's kind of floating yeah. towards the $500, and this one realistically shoots uh, just as well. But uh, it's, I mean, it's in great shape for, for the amount I paid for it. They handle well. They have an interesting cock on close action, which is interesting. Uh, you can fire them real quick. Uh, there's a legendary thing called the Mad Minute where soldiers would get off, you know, X amount of aimed shots in under a minute, um, which. Some people have disproved, some people have proved, I don't know, that's a big old it, Yeah, it's kind of a, uh, it, one of those topics that nobody can agree on, yeah. kind of like our fifth gun. I'm skeptical myself, but anyways. I want to try it. I'll try it. I'll yeah. fail at it. But so will I, it. but yeah. I still want to try it. Yeah. So the shooting stuff is fun. But these are cool. Uh, they have history. The service length on them is incredible. Soldiers of Empire carried them on every continent. So, great rifle. For yeah, under it's an awesome dollars. gun. Yeah. Next up, we've got what, in my opinion, is the greatest rifle ever made. That's going to be the Mauser 98. Now, this is a Yugoslavian Mauser 98, so not necessarily what would be regarded as a collector Mauser. There are Mausers out there that you could drop thousands and thousands of dollars on. Um, of course, a lot of people hear Mauser and associate it with the Third Reich, when in reality, they were made and introduced in the days of the German Empire, and Prussia, of course. But um, it's admittedly the best bolt-action system that's ever been devised and is still copied today in every bolt, I mean, elements in every single bolt-action. Yeah, action just about. Rifle. I mean, they're staggeringly accurate. The action's always smooth, slick. There's just not much more po positive I can say about it. They're full. No, I mean, it's a great gun. Um, unfortunately, I don't really love them. They're great guns, but it's not something that's for me. Um, this particular example I purchased, um, you know, and then it sat in my safe for about a year. And Alex said that he had to have it because he wanted all the Mausers in the world. I want all the Mausers in the world. But they made 100 million of them, so... Still working on that. That's a goal. Yeah. But uh, this is a Yugo Mauser, like I said. And I think, uh, what'd you get this for? Uh, I think I paid $240 from it from JG. From JG, yeah. I bought one from JG for $219 uh, at one time. So there was a time when also you could get these for $10 and $20, uh, including the K98Ks that everyone wants. Everyone wants stuff affiliated with the Third Reich. Uh, some people don't. Some people don't want that in their safe. It's whatever. It's I, I mean, I can understand fine. the history behind it is kind of interesting, yeah. um, just as a you know a firearm that made a huge impact on humanity. But uh, I mean, buying something because it was Third Reich, I don't really see that. Yeah, to each their own. Some people are collectors. Yeah, um, but you yeah, know. a Mauser by its own in its own right is a great shooter, and that's why we chose it. Um, going by that same kind of uh, you know shootability standpoint, the next gun is an obvious choice here. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's one of the Swiss rifles, isn't it? Absolutely. This is a Swiss K31, and I believe Aim Surplus is blowing these out right now at three hundred and twenty dollars or something like that. Uh, something like that. Yeah, so you can find these for three hundred ish dollars, and they're cool because they're straight pull. They're technically they call them bolt actions, but uh, to work the action, you just pull back, push forward, new round. It's got a helical bolt on it that unlocks itself on a guide. Yes, I don't know if you you, you probably can't. See See, but this uh, bolt does rotate counterclockwise as you pull the action, uh, the operating handle back, and uh, it'll eject the round, feed a new one in. And it, I mean, they're pretty quick to shoot. Not quite as quick as the uh, the Enfield, though. I would say not quite as quick as the Enfield. I don't know. They should be on paper. It, the, right. At least I can't do it. I'm sure there's a guy in Switzerland that can school us all. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Um, but yeah, they're they're great rifles, and at 300 and some odd dollars, since they never actually made corrosive ammunition for these that I'm aware of. 
The boards are all spectacular. Yeah. Even though the oh. wood is often beat up pretty bad, mm -hmm. I actually refinished this one. Um, you know, the, the metal quality is always great. The boards are great. And surplus ammunition is available, which is affordable. Yeah, and uh, it, strangely enough, I think it's all match ammunition. It's all, it's all, they say it's all match grade ammunition. Yes, I, don't, um, I don't know what the criteria is. I, I don't either, but, uh, you know, I know the ones that I have shot have been extremely accurate. Uh, the Swiss really yeah. did hit one out of the park with this gun. And at $300, if you're looking for a gun that you want to, I don't know, hunt with or just have in your collection, <laughs> that's, that's a great option, guys. Now, next up is something we reviewed together a while back from my mm -hmm. odd gun series. This gun was France's military service rifle for a while. This, of course, is a Moss 4956. This and honestly, my favorite CNR rifle out of all of these. That's a bold statement. He even one time said that he liked it better than the Garand. And coming from a former serviceman who owns a Garand, that's a pretty bold statement. Yes, I, I, I've been looking for a nice one of these in 308 and uh, haven't found one yet. But uh, it will get added to my collection if I do come across it. Uh, it's just a, a really great rifle. Um, you know, you've seen uh, the two of us shooting in some of the videos. I'm a man of smaller stature, and this gun really lends itself well to somebody who's a little bit smaller. You know, but it's it's just an outstanding gun, super reliable. Um, you know, we referenced it uh, in an earlier video. Uh, Ian McCollum did a, uh, a mud torture test, and this rifle performed exceptionally well. It's also kind of cool if you're a gun nerd like we are because mm -hmm. it's DI in its purest form. Right, yeah. Which is gas travels up through the tube and slams right into the carrier. There's no you know? internal little piston or anything like that. Like yes, that you can there. see the, uh, the gas tube right here. But unlike the Rashid that uh, I kind of gave a bit of a criticism because the uh, gas tube would burn me when I was reloading the, the rifle, this one's kind of set back a little bit and uh, it, it doesn't. I don't have that issue on this particular gun. It is cool also because you can reload with stripper clips or you can take the 10 round detachable magazines out easily, unlike the Rashid, which they're fixed as fixed can be. Nearly. But, uh, you know, the only problem is ammo availability. They fire 7.5 French. There are some 7.62 by 51 conversions, although I've heard that they're spotty at best. Yeah, I've heard that, but, uh, you know, that, that said, I don't really want to hunt for it, but, you know, hunt for the, uh, the French ammo, because if I buy one of these, I, I'm going to shoot it a lot. Yeah, I really like no, it that much. Sure. I get it, and uh, especially with this with this butt pad, which is actually factory. This is a, a French-made accessory they put on them to soften the recoil. They're just gentle shooters, and uh, they're really cool guns, guys. Mm -hmm. I can't sing the praises of this more. Uh, just a phenomenal fire. Um, now, up next is kind of where we disagree. Yeah, I'm going to give you yours. Okay. Um, I chose the I'll SKS. And? I chose the Mosin Nagant. I chose the SKS because it's legal in a lot of places where semi-automatic rifles are harder to come by, like California. Um, SKSs are a hit there because they're, you know, a lot of them I believe are grandfathered in because they don't have a detachable magazine and, you know, some of them are featureless or whatnot, whatever the crazy gun laws are out there. Um, also in New York, I believe they're legal, and in Canada, they're like $100 because there's no Chinese import ban. So that's, uh, it's just a cool feature. They also shoot decently. They shoot 7.62 by 39, which is very inexpensive. Um, so if you want to go out with a big crate of 7.62 by 39 and just blast all day with a semi-automatic rifle. Yeah, you can do it with that gun. Th this is a way to go. I mean, they're fine guns. Um, I just prefer the Mosin to the SKS, personally. It's also worth noting that his choice is a lot cheaper. These, this actually, my dad bought this for $50 in the 90s at a gun show. It's since uh, made it into my collection by uh, no fault of his. I kind of snuck in there. But, um, you know, it is it is what it is. It's kind of a, it's kind of cool. It's been around since I was a kid in the, in the safe, so. Yeah, and uh, I do want to touch a little bit on price. Um, something that kind of is a little off-putting for me about those is uh, for a decent one, you're looking at about $350 now. That, that's right. That does ding it quite a bit. Yeah. If it was, I mean, if we're talking, if these go back to Canada prices, then this would, unfortunately, yeah, I think I, it, it would, it would shut out the Yeah, name. it would, yeah. Uh, but no. uh, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, I assure you guys of that, unfortunately. No. So uh, why don't you explain your pick there, Patrick? Well, um, mine is uh, just a Mosnagant. It's a Russian-built uh, M38. Um, I refinished the stock with some boiled linseed oil. And I, I mean, I really like this one. I've got uh, four or five Nagants that I really like. Um, and I mean, they're reasonably accurate, uh, relatively cheap uh, for about 20 cents a trigger pull. I will concede that the ammo price on that is uh, very alluring. Yeah, and the cool thing about it is it's a full power round. It's not an intermediate, uh, That's true. you know, yeah. a, a, you know. Basically, if you want to hone your, your skills and try and get your flinch out as a new shooter, that is a great tool. Yeah, to it is. Um, unfortunately, sometimes the triggers on these feel like pulling a piano across a gravel road with, a, <laughs> a you know, some twine. Yeah. But um, Timony does, uh, I think it's Timony, isn't it? Um, or is it, I, somebody offers an aftermarket trigger. I don't have one. 
because I think it's fine the way it is. I understand it's a crude rifle that was intended to be built uh, quickly and cheaply. And the reason I, I personally disagreed with it is because prices are increasing on them. Um, a nice, this they is an M38, which is a premium one now because they're shorter and handier. Yes. Prices are getting up there. Um, you know, infields were one time $10. These one day will be ridiculous in price. I, think. I, I, I suspect I agree. that. People might disagree with that, but I think one day we'll be looking at infields and reminisce about, hey, I remember when those were $100. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, um, like this one in particular, I think I gave $200 for. Um, and like Alex said, it's a little bit more of a premium uh, rifle. Uh, they're not as common. Uh, I paid $120 for my hex receiver, uh, 9130, and I've bought round receiver guns for as low as $70 in the last couple of years, but uh, prices have increased a little bit and they're in the $120 to $150 range at this point. Yeah, so basically we just had a dip, small disagreement there, but uh, you know, people disagree on things. Uh, neither of us I don't think is wrong. It's all personal preference. I, I think you're wrong. Oh, you think I'm wrong? I do. Okay, well, okay. fair enough. Anyways, guys, hey, we sincerely appreciate you guys watching the program. This is Alex C. with TFB TV. I'm Patrick Garth. And if you hit that subscribe button, we'd really appreciate it, especially if you enjoyed our video, let us know.